are wrapping up Hispanic Heritage Month. We've been focusing on all aspects of Hispanic culture this entire month, and we have just a few days left. And we wanted to chat with our own Candace Campos about something near and dear to her. You know, the yes. arts are so important to you, but especially growing up, a unique kind of dance, yeah. part of your heritage. It was interesting because when I used to dance in Miami, you know, you had the jazz, ballet, you know, tap. But there was something about flamenco that I just mm -hmm. really, really loved. So one thing I remember from being a kid is taking those flamenco classes. You had to have a little bit of attitude and a little <laughs> seriousness, which you know is not me. And as you know, music and dance is a big part of Hispanic cultures and different styles of music and dance are very popular in different places. So I really wanted to take a look, a little more, a little more in-depth look of the history of flamenco and share that all with you. So I spoke to Tammy Weber de Milad, not Miller, Milad, <laughs> who is the director of Flamenco del Sol Dance Studio in Oviedo. Most people are familiar with flamenco as the dance that comes from Spain with the clickety clickers, mm -hmm. you know, and that's kind of maybe the extent of what they see. But the piece that most people don't realize is that the origins of flamenco actually come from Asia. They come from India. So they come from the group of people that migrated out of India hundreds of years ago, became sort of this, this group of people that were the Roma gypsies that went throughout Europe, through the Middle East, through Africa, took many different paths, and a group of them ended up in the south of Spain, in Andalusia. And because of the time that they were there and the political pressures and the social pressures, the Spanish Inquisition, all of these things came to kind of crush this and move flamenco underground. And that's when flamenco truly became what it is today. Wow, I did not, I had no clue about that. I wonder, I, I, is that why there's so much passion involved? Because it is something so personal? I think so. I mean, if flamenco is truly the art form of, of an oppressed people. And so I think that speaks to everybody. In, in some way, shape or form, it, it really does speak to everybody's soul. Can you kind of give us an idea of kind of what is flamenco when you visualize it? Yeah, absolutely. So kind of a fun fact, flamenco, we think of the dresses and we think of the castañuelas and we think of a, you know, a lady and a man and it's very passionate. But flamenco started as not being a danced art form. Flamenco was a cante. It was it was song. So this is something where a group of us get together, our family, our friends, and you know, someone is, I'm gonna pound on the table. Dun. And it's like a storytelling and somebody starts to tune their voice and they say something and they sing and someone else sings and agrees. So it was very kind of tribal in that sense. Visually, it's very stunning. Audibly, it's extremely stunning. Um, there are over 50 flamenco rhythms. So we think of something like salsa. That's one rhythm. Okay. Um, -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. <laughs> right. So flamenco has over 50 and each one of these is, is intended in a different way. They have different accents. The letra or the, um, the lyrics are somewhat different. Sometimes they reflect certain geography. Um, some of them are meant for prayer only. Only it should be a cappella. This one is accompanied. Some are dance, some are not. So there's an entire world in this package that most foreigners, if you will, or people who visit Spain or see flamenco locally or around the United States or anywhere um, are probably not aware of. And it, that's that richness. And this is why it, it is a UNESCO world, world uh, heritage art that is protected. Aren't those dresses just gorgeous? Yes, yes I feel I like I just learned so much yeah. in that last two minutes. And another thing that Tammy told me that's pretty cool, you know, the castanuelas or the castanets, mm -hmm. the little wooden tiki tiki tikis. Mm -hmm. um, well, they're an iconic Spanish instrument along with like a guitar, but originally the castanets came from the Phoenicians, which, you know, they, they used them as shells. You yeah, know, they used know. shells originally, which is interesting because the castanets nowadays are still in shaped the shape like of the shells, which is just, it's just very fascinating. I mean, obviously she has her dance studio there in Oviedo. And I asked her, you know, what's, you know, what's the ages? And she said, what's interesting about flamenco is that there's really no age limit because mm -hmm. with flamenco, it's all about the life that you, you lived. Mm. So, you know, of course you have the three and four year olds with the pink polka dot flamenco <laughs> you have dresses. some little baby uh, outfits, oh, right? Oh yeah, yeah. When my parents go to Spain, they always bring back some of those, you know, perfect little flamenco polka dot outfits and, and so things cute. like that. But if, if there's anybody Anybody who's interested, who maybe wants to see that beautiful art form in real life and uh, it live, um, they're going to be at the Fusion Fest. They have a mm -hmm. bunch of different shows going on. Uh, Fusion Fest is next month. They'll have some shows. They do a lot of um, 
they do a lot of shows. They did Romeo and Juliet last month. Mm -hmm. So they really incorporate flamenco into so many interesting things. So I have that full story there on clickorlando.com under the Hispanic Heritage Month tab. And what's really cool is how it originated mm -hmm. just really mm -hmm. all throughout the world because it started with a group that migrated out of India, passed through Europe, right. from the Middle East, Africa, and then ended up in southern Spain, which is such a big part of why yes. in 2010 they made it a protected art form. Right, starting a song, I mean, so much. You yeah. packed a lot into that two minutes yeah. and 34 I seconds. I learned a lot. I mean, yeah. I did flamenco for, for many years when I was younger, but it was just, you know, you just know the dance steps. You go right. into your dance studio, but it's interesting. Her classes, they actually um, zoom in with, with Spanish teachers from Spain and help out with that. So just, just great stuff.